Welcome guys to another episode of Civil Textures. My name is Freddy and today we're going to be looking at importing Float Zone 3 into Civil 3D. Now, I know we've done this tutorial before, however, the catch is we do not need QGIS now in Civil 3D. As you know, AutoCAD LT because it's so cheap because it doesn't have as many features as Civil 3D or even AutoCAD, the full version. Now, if you're new to the channel, I upload weekly tutorials on civil engineering technical design aspects. So we haven't dived in principle too much, but we're doing more of like giving you the tools and the knowledge of how to use the software to create your designs. And if you haven't checked my website out, go ahead and check it. There is a forum now, you can become a member and any engineer can answer your questions. And I check the website three times a day. So if you have any questions, you can pop them in there or leave it in the comments below. Either way, many of the viewers know that I actually respond really quickly to the comments and try to help as much as I can. Now, without further ado, let's begin. So guys, if you don't have access to Autodesk uh, Civil 3D, then I made a video already on how to import your Float Zone 3 or 2 uh, through QGIS into AutoCAD LT. So in this tutorial, uh, we're just going to show it how easier it is with Civil 3D. So if you have it, why not use it? So I went ahead and found the site. So basically, I know it's flooding. It seems nice and uh, beautiful topographical survey. Just going to copy the longitude and latitude. In Civil 3D, uh, if you go map aerial, it already sets it up for you. So all I did was capture the location but what you could do is when you go to insert where is it, it should have been insert uh, remove location there we go yes so if we remove the location right and we turn off the map and delete actually this one so we're gonna set up from map and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy the latitude and longitude i'll leave in the description below how you can get this website it's and we hit the search bar we're gonna drop a mark now and we're gonna hit next now what will happen it was ask us to select the coordinate system and the units obviously our drawing is in meters hopefully i set it up in meters but if not just cancel the command and set up meters now these are my eastings and northings i'm just gonna copy paste them and i'm gonna use the national grid system next and I think this is where my Eastings and Northings are. So should have been off. So if I, yeah, I'm bang on. So just zoom in a tiny bit. Let's zoom out like this. And then all you have to do is go to your location, capture viewport, hit enter, and then map aerial map off. And then you have it like this. This works in AutoCAD LT as well. Now, when you do the geolocation, make sure you have a point so you can snap to it, so we can bring it as close as accurate as possible. Now let's go into the juicy bit. So we're just going to go to our website, which is the environment.data.gov.uk, and I'll leave in the link uh, in the description below. And what we're going to do is we're just going to copy paste the how do we do it? The grid reference and hit find it and there we go so this is the float zone 3 map you can see here it says c float zone 3 so i want to get that map so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do area of interest i'm going to highlight this area and then i'm just going to click download the shape file now this might take a few seconds so it depends on your, your mileage may vary depending on your internet connection well because i don't have an ethernet connection it might take time a bit longer but yes we will prepare this and that's all we need actually once we get this file we're gonna extract it because it comes already zipped so let's download it i already created a tutorial ea data and let's save it in there now let's find that folder there we go we just wait for chrome to download it download it we're gonna extract all hit yes and then we're gonna open it go to data select everything in there and hit send to compressed file now the reason we're doing this is because shape files uh, usually they're compiled from five files i don't remember all of them on top of my head so what i would do is some softwares can accept a shape file zip file so basically it will accept the all the files or you, it, 
basically how it is. So if the software asks you, give me a shape file, is either going to ask you for the biggest shape file size, which is this one here, the 2.2. So that's where the most information is. Or it's going to ask you to select the five relative files. And I think it's the PRG and the, or let's see the formats. So SPX, uh, CHP, and DBF. And I think the CPG. Or you can just compress them into the zip file. Now we go back to uh, Civil 3D. And all we have to do is go map import. And then we're going to select the zip file from the EA data. So basically the one we extracted and then the data and the one we zipped. And now a few things. The coordinates are correct. Spatial filter. Uh, that is basically cuts it, if I'm not mistaken, to where we want. So it's like the previous throw in PDS when we said we bring all the points in this area. Now, because this is a polyline, so it's an area we're bringing in, we cannot basically cut it. It will cut everything outside of it that's individual, but if it's a line crossing the boundary, it will not cut it. Now, uh, regarding the input layer, we've got it there, drawing layer, object class, coordinates, data. You can create object data if you want. Uh, you can select the fields you can bring in. Okay, let's create it. We don't lose anything. And then the points, bring them as AutoCAD points or as text. You select how you want it. Now, if you tick the import polygons as close polygons, it will not bring the hatching. If you untick it, it will bring the hatch as well. So let's see. Hit OK. Wait just a few minutes or a few seconds, depending on your computer. And this is our float zone 3. Now, the reason I brought the hatching in is because it would have been hard to distinguish from the polyline, just the polyline, where does the hatching finish? Now, as you can see here, it brought it as one object. Uh, I've selected it like a few seconds ago, it's still trying to compile because sometimes those files can be big. Like, look at this. Anyway, so because our site is this plot of land here, what I want to do is I want to cut everything off. So one way I would suggest to do this is first, let's go to our layer properties and select our float map for planning. If you're in Civil 3D and can't find it, just use the search bar here. Color, it's flow zone three, so we go for a dark blue. Transparency, let's add one, 50% should be fine. And hit escape. Now, if it doesn't change color, then just go to the property settings and change it by layer. Now, how are we gonna fix this issue? So we have the line, but it seems like it comes as a kind of a block. So I have to figure where it work around it. So if we type properties, have a look, it's a polygon. So now, wow. see, it brought the, the object data, as I told you. So we've got the layer, we've got the fluvial models, shape length, and area. If we explode it, will it keep it? Because what we want to do is basically want to trim it. Basically, we want to use the, the extents of the geolocation map to trim it. So let's try the explode. Yeah, it explodes it. So let's select this one, use the trim command. Would this work? Let's see. Yeah, it worked. And this one as well. And then everything else can be deleted easily. So just select, delete, select, delete. Or you can just use this as well. Just be very careful. Don't delete something you might need. So because we want to show the stuff that we just need. So that's why I'm doing all this. So now, obviously, we could explode these as well, but I'm just going to keep them just for the sake of it. And all I'm going to do is put this map in a different layer. So layer properties and let's create a new layer. We need to remove the filter. So I think if we type L, there it is. And let's name it binge map. And what we're going to do is select the map external there and go to home, switch it to binge map. There we go. And then if we go to binge map and turn it off, it turns it off. But before we turn it off, actually, we want to recreate the rectangle perimeter that it had. 
the reason we're doing this is so we can bring the hatching i'm not sure if the hatch command would work with the map extent so that's why i'm doing it this way so we go hatching we select the layer that we want to be in i think we have not selected it so let's select flood up for planning select the hatch tool go to solid and zoom out a tiny bit so you can be able to select it there you go and there you go and then just the outline we can select similar and just put them back into the flood zone layer and we can delete this rectangle and what we can do is bring a bang back our bench map apologies for my computer is slow it's like long overdue an update but due to the bitcoin mining industry we're in shortage of gpus we'll get over it so there you go and that is how you bring your float zone 3 map in civil 3d i hope you found this tutorial useful and if you think that i might have missed something leave it in the comments below other than that if you liked it hit the like button and if you loved it hit the subscribe button don't forget to share it with your colleagues as i'm trying to spread some knowledge here so if you help me out that'll be great plus it gives me more motivation to continue and make more video for you guys now don't forget to become a member to the website and take care and i'll see you next time